Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays The Binding of Isaac. These are the challenge runs that we are doing, but I'm doing a vanilla run today. You might be saying, Northern Lion, why? Why are you doing a vanilla run? Fuck you! That's why. That's not nice, actually. I just kind of felt like doing a vanilla run, so... The question is, who should we play as? I kind of want to play as Samson. I've been feeling like in a lot of runs lately, I've been like, you know, I, I could really use Rage. So what better way to get Rage? Uh, then by actually just starting as a character that has to begin with. So we are going to be playing with no restrictions beyond the fact that, of course, uh, we are starting with a little bit lower health than we would normally be starting with a character like Isaac. And we also have, uh, literally zero cents, zero bombs, and zero keys. So this Tinted Rock is going to be useless to us for now. However, if we are able to get a bomb drop that does increase our chances of getting a key and thus being able to go to the item room, of course, getting health important as well. And Samson's one of those weird characters because he starts with great offensive potential but at the same time he suffers from a pretty substantial lack of survivability as well as utility so hopefully I would almost rather get a key and not any spirit hearts out of this but instead we get two spirit hearts which is fine I'll deal with it uh, you know we do have another bomb which we can well this is actually a tricky situation uh, do we want to trade one bomb for 11 cents or do we want to we have already lost a spirit heart like a total dingus here um, well, there's more money there. That kind of complicates the situation. One bomb, it's not 11 cents, that's 15 cents. One bomb for 15 cents is an unbelievable deal. I don't even know if I've ever seen that before. Just dime and nickel side by side. If that's a, a portent of the luck to come, then we might be in a very good situation. Of course, there is a pill there. I'm kind of spoiled for choice uh, when it comes to what... Oh, God! That was so close. Uh, when it comes to what uh, I can do with this bomb. So what we might want to do... This is weird saying this, because I don't know if I've ever been in a situation like this before, but... Weird to say, Anarchist Cookbook might actually be the most useful drop I could get from Pride here. I still kind of think it would be garbage, but hey, we might have a good opportunity to at least make use of it for a while. So let's just back it up and not get hit anymore. We got a tarot card and a key. Well, the tarot card, certainly useful, and the key kind of opens up things a little bit for me. Uh, to go to the item room. Regardless of what the item room is, I will definitely be going in. I just want to get a second bomb, please. I don't need pyro. Give me a fucking homing bomb. That's fine by me. Uh, whoa! Okay. That's actually exactly how that worked out. So we get plus five poison bombs. Not the greatest item for long-term success. But wow, what a lucky spirit heart drop there. Um, but at the very least, a, a very good item considering we have a lot of opportunities for what to do with our bombs here. So we're going to definitely pop a bomb on this tinted rock. Since I've apparently lost the ability to dodge, we're definitely going to pop a bomb down here so I could possibly get uh, that 15 cents. And we're going to be at 24 cents already as of the first floor, which is pretty amazing. Obviously, we'll be on the lookout for more keys. That pill worries me, but also arouses me. So we'll deal with the, the possibility of picking that up a little bit later. But for now, uh, I want to get a second and third key. I guess technically now it would be like a first and second key. Uh, because I would absolutely love to go to both the shop and the item room. We can make some good stuff happen. Now, poison bombs, you know, it's, it's totally possible that this run will merely, or that item will merely have allowed me to get all of that money. Uh, and the tinted, or, yeah, the tinted rock that gave me the spirit heart as well. And if that's the case, that's fine. Uh, but I kind of hope that we end up getting a little bit more bomb rich, like we pick up a pyro or at least some other bomb effects. So that I can make uh, good use of the poison bombs. Otherwise, you know, it's kind of a shame to kind of pick up a one use item like that. Despite the fact that I probably shouldn't be complaining because it has helped us out a lot already. So we're just going to take these guys out easily. Rage will build in no time at all. Now we should be basically, well, maybe not one-shotting them, but we're pretty darn close. So we're just going to hang out here. We're definitely going to shoot all the poop because you never know. We already got a random spirit heart drop by way of uh, one of the poops, which is pretty lucky. I almost got hit about seven times there. Another cent is worth, you know, approximately as much as is listed on the FDIC insured currency denomination that we just picked up. And we've got to be reaching the end of this floor, <clears throat> in spite of it being an XL floor. Don't get hit here. We should be able to one-shot these flies very shortly. And I do need, above all else, to probably stack up my health a little bit. Our, our damage is going to be fine. I mean, Samson's base damage, not fantastic, but on the other hand, uh, it builds up very quickly. So we can always make that work. There, that's going to go to our second item room. I can't believe I managed to dodge all of those shots. We have a Tinted Rock in here. and We've been getting very lucky. Uh, we've, we've found a lot of utility, a lot of uses actually, to be less snooty about my phrasing, uh, that we can use these bombs for. So let's, uh, hope that we get a second key from this dude right here. Well, another penny. Could come in handy. I mean, it's looking like it's going to be a pretty shop-rich run, considering 
All, oh, well, we can trade one bomb for one key. So we're gonna do that, and now we've solved the situation. Uh, let's find our second item room. We'll go back to the shop and see if we can make something beautiful happen on this floor. If we get a really good item room and a half-decent shop, this could be one of the better floors in recent memory. Better first floors, anyway. We've certainly set ourselves up to be okay here as we move forwards. But we really need HP upgrades. We could also earn a deal with the devil on this floor. There is another key. Now, I kind of wish I didn't trade a bomb for it, but that's okay. There is another, uh, possibility for me to... Oh, just be careful here. Uh, there is another... That was so close! Uh, like, six cents for one bomb, so I will do that. I, I kind of want to check and see if the secret room is here as well, but that's okay. We'll just take our six cents and leave. 32 cents on the first floor is pretty goddamn crazy. I don't know if I want to look for the secret room on this floor. The amount of money that's dropping is fucking insane. We're going to have 33 cents, and I haven't even shot all the poop. 34 cents. Uh, we get holy water, which is, I guess, perfect comeuppance, because that is uh, not a very good item for us to be taking with us. That being said, we really can't complain. Uh, I kind of wish we got a spacebar item though, just so, in, you know, in the off chance we got a uh, battery or 9 volt from the shop, I'd be able to at least increase the efficacy of it. But in any case, almost done with the first floor here. Tons of red hearts around. Obviously, we're not going to be in the market for any arcades yet, but that's okay. Let's come down here, check out our shop. I'm going to save bombs, save keys. I realize there are golden chests, uh, but I don't feel like those are as important as ensuring that I can go to shops and item rooms on future floors. So we'll definitely buy the Spirit Hearts. Bum Friend is not worth picking up, in my opinion. I know Ed explicitly disagrees with this. He thinks uh, Bum Friend is... Well, at least when I heard him speaking anecdotally uh, when his wife was streaming once, when Danielle was streaming, she was like, I don't want to pick up Bum Friend. And he's like, it's like mathematically advantageous to pick it up. Well, you know, he's got the numbers to back it up. All I have is my own anecdotal experience, but... In any case, we're going to kill Famine here, you know, picking up a single cube of meat, not so bad. I love fighting Famine on the first room, because it's like, you know, normally it's not, you're not relying on fantastic items right off the bat, unless you're playing as someone like Kane, or, you know, we didn't get all the spirit hearts that we managed to get here uh, on a normal Samson run. So, you know, health is sometimes necessary, but for the most part, especially if you're playing as Isaac, it's just kind of like, yeah, we'll start off kind of leisurely here. Obviously, this is going to be a fairly easy boss fight. I should, before I get him to go down into the uh, head-only state, do exactly what I just did and get him to kill his own flies, and now we are sitting pretty. Although, I, I guess I could have built up Rage some more, but it doesn't really matter. What I'm going to be hoping for here is HP upgrade from the next boss, followed by, like, a Mom's Knife trade or something like that, which would make it awesome. Mom's Knife trade sounds like the worst underground black market ever. Okay, we got Larry Jr. I was hoping it would be Blue Larry Jr. Sadly not. But, oh, okay, I almost got myself trapped in hell there, which was entirely my own fault. One single well-placed poison bomb would definitely be enough to destroy Larry Jr. Uh, but I don't want to play with fire unnecessarily, maybe hit myself, maybe waste a bomb that could be used to get a spirit heart on the next floor. Let's just do things uh, very by the numbers here. Taking some perpendicular shots at Larry Jr. Very easy to kill, speed upgrade, deal with the devil I probably won't be able to take advantage of. Ah, it's Krampus! That's actually a very good thing. Now, Krampus, with my lack of damage, Krampus is a pain in the ass, so that poison bomb, while not a necessity, is at the very least going to speed things up a little bit and probably cause me to lose less spirit arts, which is very valuable. Uh, we might even want to drop another one on him. But I think it would be foolish to get rid of all of my bombs. Reason being, I mean, one bomb is substantially better than zero bombs. Because there's always those situations, especially when we get down to the caves, where, you know, we can use one bomb to pick up two or three bombs. So that is what I, I want to do moving forwards. Or what I'm hoping is going to happen moving forwards. Assuming we don't get, like, the bomb bag or something. That was terrible damage on my part. Maybe I can get him to walk. That was equally terrible damage. Definitely should have popped that second bomb. Because <clears throat> we have lost a Spirit Heart as a result now, but that's okay. We are rolling in Spirit Hearts, and our base damage is going to improve a little bit as a result of this encounter, assuming I survive, which is up in the air, but fairly likely nonetheless. So let's just keep it up. This has been a very, very long first two floors, but that's okay. Because we've set ourselves up, well, not fantastically, fairly strong for the future. This is probably the most I've been hit on the first two floors in a long time as well. We've lost at least, like, two and a half, three spirit arts. On the bright side, I've gained, like, five. Still. One more hit might be enough. If I could actually manage to... Oh my god, are you kidding me? It was one more hit, but I still managed to get hit myself. Okay! Marathon first floor is done. We've got 32 cents and some upgrades. It is time to take a sip of coffee here. Mmm. 
Coffee is too hot. All right. Maybe after the case part one, we'll be able to get that sweet, delicious caffeine fix that is necessary for my, you know, the commentary sector of my brain to take it to the next level. Because right now, it just feels kind of caffeine-addled. You know, it's pretty early in the morning here. It's some, like 11.30 a.m. But it's 11.30 a.m. PST, man, so... You know, my brain's still on, like, Eastern Standard Time, so I'm basically getting the midday blues right now. That is just the worst excuse ever. Please, we probably have earned an arcade here. Which is great. Those bombs are great, too. The reason the arcade is great is obviously because I need HP upgrades, if at all possible. Now, Fighting Gluttony is awesome as well, because we have another good chance to get HP upgrades. Uh, probably, like, a 25% chance of picking up the, uh, the heart on this one. Which is fantastic. Gluttony is also probably my favorite mini boss to fight, simply because he's single target and he's easy to dodge. And he has a high chance of dropping an item like that, which is fantastic for us. So that was well worth the time. Why not pop the Hermit card right away? And we're definitely going to pick up the battery, even though we have no use for it yet. Uh, at some point, that's going to be very useful for us indeed. So, do I want to go to the item room before I go to the boss room? I really don't think it matters in the whole scheme of things. Like, we're doing alright for ourselves right away, so we might as well give this a try. Uh, who knows, we might have a chance to defeat... Or to, to get a deal with the devil, and of course we know that deals with the devil will not be Krampus from now on. So that's good. Uh, this is an uh, okay boss fight. It's annoying. Uh, Gertie has a lot of health, but on the bright side, Gertie also creates a lot of enemies, so we should be able to build up our rage fairly strongly. Uh, and provided I stay focused, which is not always easy for me to do, not that I've been clinically diagnosed with ADHD. Don't you hate when people are like, Oh yeah, like, I have trouble focusing now and then when I'm doing something I don't like. I have a clinically, like, dsm 4 style pseudo-mental illness. Not to say that you're mentally ill if you have ADHD, but, you know, a clinical condition. It's like when you're like, Oh, I don't like when there's, like, literal human shit on my floor. I'm so OCD about that. No, you aren't, motherfucker. You are a very rational person. And your cry for attention has fallen on deaf ears. Anyway, Gertie is almost dead here, which is good, because I'm starting to realize my kind of spirit heart buffer zone that I've created. The North Korea of my uh, health is not going to hold out too much longer, well, until we get Squeezy, which is actually going to boost that up a little bit. Uh, somehow that shop opened up. It was weird. When I went in before, uh, I went in with the Hermit card, so it was still unlocked, but uh, apparently that has been resolved. Just want to... Oh, wow! That was incredibly lucky. Free secret room, where we will get a slot machine, which I will play twice. Just to see. I would love to get a key out of it. Well, we picked up literally nothing. Uh, we are going to look for our item room. Then we can probably bolt down to the next floor. There's not much keeping me here. So far, I, I have not really been impressed with the uh, boss room items that we've been getting. Definitely going to be hoping for a uh, second cube of meat on the next floor. I can't complain, though, because we did get that free HP upgrade by way of uh, Gluttony here. So that's not a big problem. We do have a key. I'm still just looking for the item room. We're probably going to end up doing, like, the entire floor here. This is, like, the slowest but also kind of least tense run I've had in a while. This kind of feels like a leisurely Sunday stroll. Umbilical Cord is, again, in keeping with that theme, I suppose, a trinket which is neither super useful nor totally useless, I guess. Actually, it may indeed end up being totally useless for us. Uh, but again, just going to try to stack up my damage. We're going to see if I was remiss in leaving that pill behind. Bombs are key, made almost zero difference, so... I mean, I guess it's better for us to have three keys in case we come across some golden chests, and uh, it future-proofs us so we can definitely go to the shop on the next floor. Although, I think we were already at that level already. That was some close dodging there. Keep amassing one cent per room, apparently, and this is our last room on this floor. I hate this room when you do, like, such little base damage, because you got to get these guys all in sync, like a Lance Bass family reunion. There we go. One is down. Now it becomes easier. Our dodging doesn't become as difficult, and of course our rage has increased. One more shot should be enough to murder this dude. I was wrong, but thankfully Cube of Meat saved me from taking damage. Alright, so we pick up Remote Detonator. Uh, battery is obviously useless here, but at the very least we do get five extra bombs. So item rooms so far have basically just been making me bomb rich. What have we gotten so far? Remote Detonator, uh, Bob's Curse, and the other one was uh, Holy Water. So. Not great item rooms, not great boss rooms so far, but uh, regardless of that, basically just in raw consumables, we're doing fantastically. If we could ever replace our spacebar item with something better, we'd be in a great position. But for now, down to the caves part two, or I'm going to guess the catacombs part two. Mm-hmm. It's almost as if I've played this game before. 
so we're just gonna hang back. Now, Remote Detonator again, I, I've been kind of shit-talking Bob's Curse, shit-talking Remote Detonator. I don't mean to do that, because uh, those could be very useful for us if I manage to pick up something like- Oh my god, if I manage to pick up something like Pyro. Now, the other, the fringe case where I don't know what the fuck would happen is if we pick up uh, Fetus in a Jar, because I have no idea if we would be able to shoot bombs, like shoot ten bombs, and then we could Remote Detonate ourselves. Uh, which would be fantastic from like a boss killing or even any enemy killing perspective. Uh, I kind of doubt that it would work that way, but if it did, that would be totally cool. Uh, but again, I don't necessarily think things are guaranteed to work that way. This has been some interesting dodging, but we made it through there. 90% of dodging in Isaac is confidence, man. The other 10% is uh, not being unconfident. There we go. We got more bombs. Might as well fight our boss right away if it's a high... Ooh, you know what? This actually is probably worth uh, using some bombs. And remember, we do have a remote detonator, so I'm just gonna... Oh, that was terrible. I'm just gonna try to get this dude close at some point. And then we'll detonate that. Oh, that's perfect, okay. Maybe toss another one in and remote detonate that right away. That's the trick with the Fallen. If you're able to do double damage uh, just from... You know, hitting both of those Fallens with a bomb when they respawn. That is usually uh, gonna be your ticket to basically taking off like 50% of their health before you have to fight them. Now please give me a good deal with the devil item. I'm starting to run low on health and get a little bit concerned. You know what? Spirit of the Night is a totally fantastic item. It fits the bill. I'm still feeling a little bit bereft of um, damage basically. But that all being said, Spirit of the Night is a totally solid pickup and it certainly could have been much worse. I seem to have a pretty bad track record of the Fallen giving me, like, Guppy's Tail, and, like, especially when you have zero keys, or not many keys, at least. Uh, that is not altogether that useful. But Spirit of the Night gonna be a good defensive item, which is good because my health is a little bit sorely lacking right now. We do pick up a Tarot card, which is Temperance. May indeed be useful, but for now, uh, with the boss dead, we are certainly gonna look for item room and shop. Now, it's been so long since we've had a deal with the Devil. I mean, we haven't actually gotten a deal with the Devil on this entire run, except for that Krampus fight. Uh, that I'm hoping, this is a good room for us since we can fly, uh, I'm hoping we've started proccing like the chance for a deal with the angel room, in which case, you know, Sacred Heart, the Relic in particular would be fantastic, but I kind of want deals with the devil as well because, you know, Nail is a fairly common or standard deal with the devil item, and I could definitely make good use of that considering, you know, don't forget I do own the battery. Uh, and we get Stigmata in here, which is actually fantastic. A damage and health upgrade. Probably the best thing I could have hoped for. I'm not going to shoot all that poop because, of course, the Spectral Tears makes it pretty damn frustrating to do so. Now, we can just hang out over top of this rock again. Everything with solid base damage or a base damage increase is pretty valuable as Samson. Because we're at our most vulnerable when we first go into a room and don't really deal all that much damage. So we should be done with this room fairly quickly. Uh, the TNT, I'm just gonna back away from slowly here, because I don't feel like uh, I trust myself enough to not blow myself up with it. One more hit should be enough for this guy. Maybe two. Thank you for largely sticking in a straight line. Okay, we got two pills. Let's check out the shop first, just in case there was PhD or something there. Obviously, the shop is gonna be worthless for us, but we who dares wins on these pills? Balls of Steel is a good one. Even if this is terrible, this was worth it. Health down. Well, okay. <laughs> So let's effectively say that Stigmata was just a damage upgrade, in which case I don't feel so bad about that shop. Or sorry, about that item room. Um, let's check out for secret room possibilities. I totally forgot we had remote detonators, so that's not going to be it. If I have to use three bombs, I have to use three bombs. That's not it either. Sadly, uh, we don't have any red hearts, so the temperance card is not that useful here. And actually the item room is somewhere where I have no idea, so that was just a total waste of three bombs. In the meantime, down to the next floor, still feeling like we're kind of hanging on the edge. But, uh, things don't get difficult for quite some time, so we should be okay for now. Being on the Depths Part 1 doesn't worry me all that much. These enemies kind of annoying because they can actually fly, so I can't really abuse my Spirit of the Night ability. But that key is certainly going to be valuable. Golden Chest, very tempting, don't get me wrong, but we want to make sure we have enough keys to go to the item room in the shop first. Especially if I could end up getting something from the shop like Book of Revelations at this point. I'm starting to worry that I'm going to be stuck with Remote Detonator for the rest of the game, which would make certainly uh, for a novel run, because I don't know if I've ever consciously stuck with Remote Detonator uh, outside of, you know, the very early parts of the game where you kind of have to. You're just kind of hamstrung by whatever the game gives you. Now I'm just backing it up here because I, I want to take these guys on one at a time if at all possible. Just a little bit more. Okay, we're gonna get a free spirit heart here. It's amazing how long 
we've been rolling basically on pure spirit art since the very start of the game. Uh, which, you know, I'm thankful for, but at the same time, I kind of feel like the game's like, here you go, just have another spirit art. We're gonna keep you alive just long enough to butt fuck you. Which is, uh, you know, not out of the norm when it comes to Isaac for sure. So we're safe, we got another key that is a little bit of peace of mind. Now, we should be okay on this room. It's mostly a matter, or a matter of uh, watching like the fly interactions. Obviously we want to start a chain reaction here. Well, we killed one. This might do another. Nope. Well, we're killing them one by one. We just want to avoid being close to them. Wow, a dime. I'm so lucky with the money in this game so far. Um, but I just want to not be there when they get involved in their brownie in motion and start like hitting each other. Uh, this is going to take us a little while because our base damage is super low, even with Stigmata. Uh, but eventually our rage is going to build up crazy on these guys and we'll be able to kill them in uh, one or two shots each. And that's when we're going to start gaining some momentum. So it's not the most efficient way to deal with the room, but it is perhaps the safest because I ha it poses literally zero risk of damage as long as I stay over top of that gap. Uh, we have a red chest which contains an army of flies, which is pretty solid, uh, un unless they just kill themselves immediately. Now, we do have to probably take note of this tinted rock, so let's put out this fire if possible. I guess I can just do it from behind the rock in the first place. There we go. Now we'll try to get these guys to come over here, and as soon as they come back in that direction, uh, we'll pop remote detonator here. Unless they walk into the fire and kill themselves, in which case, awesome. We can at least get one or two here. One, that's fine. Uh, you know, of course I would love to open that golden chest, but that's not our number one priority when it comes to these keys. I'm just gonna kinda hang out, because I think these guys are gonna walk into the fire and hurt themselves. They might be getting close to death though, so maybe I should just pop my head out for a little bit. Remember, if you hit them, they have to continue walking in the same direction. So we can get something good going on here. That was okay! What do we have in our item room? D6? You know what? That is absolutely worth more than Remote Detonator, even as we close in on the end of the game here. I'm gonna fight our Depths Part 1 boss. It's gonna be Monstro 2 with a, a little fly army supporting him. So this should be super easy. And again, this is one of those weird situations where the right call for fighting Monstro 2 is definitely just to do this pattern. But I'm so tempted to mix it up just a little bit to get some more flies out there and build up my rage. Which might speed up the fight overall, but certainly puts me at a greater risk uh, nonetheless. In any case, getting the D6 is a super uncommon drop uh, for me to pick up at this point of the game. Usually I'm looking to get rid of my D6 by this point of the game. However, on the off chance we earn a deal with the devil, a deal with the angel, or find a terrible, uh, you know, maybe we get pageant boy or something from this boss, then D6 is certainly going to be worth its weight in gold, even if it only helps us get one better item. It it's probably better than remote detonator, which is not awful, but uh, also not really all that solid. So that range upgrade is definitely a category, uh, possibility for upgrading or rerolling. But I kind of want to reroll the deal with the angel, because I feel like, you know, you get more, there's better chance of getting something amazing. Like Holy Grail, which is fantastic. Basically, that only functions as a health upgrade. Is that better than Guardian Angel? That's an interesting question, actually. We could debate that for a while. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm going to be happy with Holy Grail. That extra HP upgrade gives me some leverage to talk to Satan in a little while. If, uh, you know, he rears his ugly head. But in the meantime, uh, you know, it's one of those things where... If, if I had Halo of Flies, I probably would have gone with Guardian Angel. Because Guardian Angel... I feel like I'm always saying, like, wow, Guardian Angel's been surprisingly good for me, especially as you get later and later into the game. Uh, but, at the same time, uh, the extra health is, is certainly a priority right now as well. So the question is, are we going to use our D6 on the shop, or are we going to reroll that range upgrade? Remember, we do have Lump of Coal, so range upgrade is not all that bad. Well, I guess that answers our question for us. We'll be fighting Greed, we'll hopefully be picking up... Uh, actually, no, it doesn't answer our question for us, because if we get the Steam Sale from fighting greed, oh, careful, uh, then we will uh, absolutely have to consider using our reroll on it. But I don't think we're going to, I think we're just going to get money instead. Wow, that spider had a big leap. Now, I think, why not pop down Temperance and just get rid of this uh, Blood Bank card? I feel like I can justify going down to literally zero health. We're going to give it a try at least. Uh, so, uh, not literally zero, I guess. That's exactly the wrong use of literally. But down to half of a red heart is what I meant. We have little Steven for some reason. That was weird. Uh, and we're just gonna finish off this last room just in case we get more red hearts. I'm confident enough in my, uh, spirit heart coverage right now that we will get some more, uh, red hearts before I lose all of my health. So with six bombs, it's probably worth looking for the secret room. We might as well take a peek. You never know. We could get, uh, something worth re-rolling or... 
uh, a little bit of money. So that's going to take us to 60 cents, which is largely worthless. And I think it's time to go to that boss room, re-roll the item, and then head down to the depths part 2, where we will then make our way down to Utero. Uh, still feel like I'm, I'm not near where I need to be in order to succeed, but let's re-roll that range upgrade. We get a health upgrade, which is exactly what I wanted. We'll take that, uh, and we will leave. Could have gone back to play the Blood Bank, but let's, you know, have some respect for people's time here. So we're on Necropolis, and this is where I think things are going to start getting a little bit... Um, we're going to be pushed to the edge. It's always... Uh, it seems to be the case where once things start to go bad in Isaac, uh, they go bad very quickly. So we've been rolling reasonably well so far, uh, but now, you know, push is coming to shove, shall we say. But in the meantime, this shouldn't be an enormous floor, and, uh, you know, assuming I abuse my flying advantage, I should, on paper at least, be able to do half decently. Now, I don't like being trapped in the corner like that. I'm just trying to take out these greed heads. Who uh, are not making dodging very difficult, which is awesome. Obviously, we want to discover our item room and shop as soon as possible. Uh, we're going to need keys to make that happen. But this... So I don't waste any D6 charges, uh, ideally. But yes, keys are going to be a necessity to make that happen. Or, uh, lucky secret rooms, I suppose. So this is a little bit of a dangerous room. We're going to have a lot of green bombs flying every which way. Now, that could work in our favor, or uh, it could end up hurting us pretty severely. But in the meantime, let's just back it up. We do have the range necessary to take these guys out. I am back at full health, and we're going to finish this room. No problem, and we get a key. So let's use that not to go to the shop yet. I'm going to use a bomb to see if I can bomb my way into the shop, which I cannot. So now we will use a key to go to the shop. Almost positive greed wouldn't be in there. Uh, and you know what? We're going to reroll our shop items, and we're going to take Nun's Habit. And we're definitely going to buy that, and we're going to buy the key as well. So that was a situation where it was definitely worth using our only key to go to the shop, because we picked up a key regardless. Now, we do have battery and nun's habit, which makes for an awesome, like, possibility for spacebar items. <sighs> Is teleport the item we want, though? I don't think so. So I'm going to leave that for now. Uh, we will be able to reroll the shit out of it. I'm just glad we've discovered it already. I, I want to get rid of the D6. I don't think Teleport is the item I want to get rid of the D6 for. Definitely Judgment is going to be worth playing here. And I hope he gives me a good item right off the bat so I don't have to, uh, you know, split my D6 usage. We have 34 cents here so we can afford to take, uh, you know, as long as is necessary. High Priestess is a good card. Taking a little coffee break because Judgment's on the screen. And whenever we have... Uh... What was I going to say? Is that Mr. Mega? Man, if we could just get Pyro, we have like all of the bomb... Well, I've gotten rid of uh, Remote Detonator now, but if we could just get Pyro, we have all of these bomb upgrades. Uh, you know what is... I guess one bomb's worth it now. You probably could figure out for yourself, divine for yourself if you will, what direction I was going to go with my commentary there, which is like, do we really want to get hit just to pick up one bomb? He says like two seconds before getting hit. Alright, so there's a secondary secret room, I did not expect that. Inside we find an Eternal Heart, which is fantastic. We have D6 charges ready. And the reason I didn't reroll Mr. Mega is because I actually really... Oh, come the fuck on. I actually really like Mr. Mega as an item. Uh, I just don't know if we're going to get maximum utility out of it here, but I certainly hope so. Uh, at the very least, if we end up picking up Pyro or just a ton of bombs, this is going to allow us to do fairly substantial damage to those late game bosses. White Feather. You know what? It's a much better item than Teleport. It would get good usage out of, uh, you know, the Nun's Habit battery combination we have. But it's not quite good enough for me to give up on the possibility of re-rolling for something better just yet. Uh, of course, there always is the potential that we'll get... That was terrible. That we'll get something like uh, the Nail from a deal with the Devil, but we can't bank on that. So in the meantime, uh, I'm just gonna try to, like... Oh, just be careful. Uh, I'm just gonna try to maximize whatever item we get from... Uh, the, uh, the golden crown room. Clearly, my brain doesn't work. Okay, that was close. We're alive, but I took a little bit more damage to make it work. Just don't lose the eternal heart at this point. Uh, that would be a goddamn shame. So we're gonna come back here, and apparently every single room is gonna give us a D6 charge. We will use to re-roll. And you know what? Halo of Flies is worth not re-rolling. We can get a better spacebar item elsewhere. Now I kind of wish we picked up Guardian Angel, but, uh, of course... There's not much we can do about that now. I still feel okay. Might seem like I'm settling to take Halo of Flies, uh, and, you know, maybe I am. But it is an item that has uh, great impact on our success during those Isaac and Blue Baby fights. So I don't think it's, uh, you know, taking, like, the worst item we could get. I think it's actually taking a fairly useful item and not uh, 
you know, oh, well, let me put it this way, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Which is an expression that I never understood uh, the, you know, etymology of. But in any case, it basically means a halo of flies that you have is better than a nail that doesn't exist yet. If I'm going to turn it into Isaac terms. We're going to take a little bit more money here, make our way towards what I hope and dream is the uh, boss area. Because now I have nothing keeping me on this floor beyond uh, the fact that I'm basically a captive audience. I just don't get hit by that guy. And you'll be okay. One of these dudes has got to be dead any second now. Okay, that was really close. Our D6 is totally charged, so no point to taking damage anymore. If I can avoid it. Thank you. By the way, Halo of Flies already probably saved me a spirit heart. So I don't feel too bad about picking that up anymore. This guy's got to be so close. Just a couple more hits managed to make. Okay, that was really scary. Every extra bomb is actually pretty damn useful because it means, uh, you know, maybe another 10% of Isaac or Blue Baby's health is going to go with it. Now, obviously, this is uh, an incredibly scary room, but as long as we kind of abuse the gap in the center, we should be able to keep these guys constantly moving. That was real scary. Um, obviously, it's not working out 100% so far, but we're doing okay. And as long as I can keep these guys on the move, we are basically at zero risk because... Uh, they don't shoot, I think, when you're very far away from them. We also want to make sure we're standing far away from the walls, which is how I take damage on this room more times than not. Not too worried about that regular chest. Let's instead just try to find our way to this boss room. We already are at 30 minutes, uh, over 30 minutes, despite the fact that we're only on Necropolis. That is like more than five minutes per floor uh, at this point, which is pretty crazy for an Isaac run. I mean, part of that is that we don't have, our base damage is super low. Part of that is we've been doing a, a fair amount of exploration uh, but beyond that, I mean, we're still, we've never been in danger in this run yet. But that could change fairly soon. We might as well take this pill. Bad trip. Uh, that hurts a little bit. Starting to worry about the possibility of that eternal heart not making it down to the next floor. Please, on this floor, give me a deal with the devil. If I could just get a, a deal with the devil, brimstone mom's knife. I mean, I think that's the first time I've said brimstone and we're like 32 minutes in, which is in all likelihood a new record. But Mom's Knife would obviously be awesome as well. Even something like the Mark or the Pact, I would consider taking. Uh, but in the meantime, let's just fight our boss here. Obviously, okay, we've taken damage already, but it's kind of a blessing in disguise. Okay, now I can't get hit. Oh my god, how fast did these... This is the fastest Red Mom I've ever fought. This is crazy. We've already lost our Eternal Heart. And all of this just because the one thing I was going to say is let's not use the High Priestess card. It was remarkable to me how fast things worked there. Okay, just play it cool. We're still doing very little damage. Uh, the problem is that we're not going to be able to build up very much rage on this fight. Because, uh, obviously... Oh, that was terrible. Again, don't die here, please. You have the power to get much further than this. Uh, but yeah, I don't have anything to build rage on. This is actually surprisingly scary so far. I, it feels... Maybe this is just, you know, some kind of bias. But it feels like Mom is moving way faster. And also... Seems to be shooting way more often than usual, which makes this Red Mom fight much harder. When she just has the foot, it's easy enough. But we're going to take the Polaroid now. We're going to take our... Oh, no, no, don't take the range upgrade. Reroll it. And we'll take the health upgrade. Okay, thank you for remembering you had the D6. We also do, you know, continue to have the D6. So, uh, hopefully we'll be able to use that on a later floor to create a better spacebar item. But in the meantime... Coffee is at a perfect drinking temperature, and we are down to the womb part one. Not feeling very confident in my play, uh, but pretty confident in, in our, uh, like, raw ability right now, like our stats. But that could change pretty quickly. But in the meantime, you know, single Larry Jr. rooms should not be costing me two hearts to get through. But uh, I was hoping we would get some hearts in compensation, but hey, we picked up one there anyway. We got Chubb. Uh, this Chubb should be fairly easily killable. I could waste some bombs, and it's not really a waste, I guess. Um, you know, considering we're fighting a fairly dickish enemy. But instead, I think I'm just going to try to get rage built up as high as possible. And try to exercise a little bit of patience for once. As opposed to just trying to rush through things, which is, which is what usually costs me uh, big with respect to health. So I'm going to try to be a little bit more methodical than I usually am. Make sure to abuse my uh, flying and spectral tears advantage. So we're just going to hang low here. Chubb is nearly dead. And if I could just back it up a little faster, perfect. We're going to get nearly back to full health. And of course, I hoped that this was the boss direction, but it's not. We are back to full health, and th that means, you know, previous mistakes that cost me a bunch of health atoned for, I suppose. Another pill, which is bad trip. No? 
Range down. All right. Well, I've had middling luck with pills so far. Uh, that is, bombs are key, which is not worth taking yet. I guess we'll stick with the High Priestess card. Uh, which is certainly going to be useful for us at some point. I'm, thank God I managed to kill that Vaginal Silkworm before it took a run at me. Oh, but then immediately took damage. And Holy Water, man! For an item that's so largely useless from like a positioning and targeting standpoint, they could at least make it do some more damage. Have some goddamn decency. And Well, another half heart, okay. So we're not doing so terribly. There's our boss room. Now, I don't want to... There's two things I don't want to deal with here. I definitely do not want to be fighting uh, death because fighting a, a pretty difficult boss just to get a second cube of meat is a terrible value proposition at this point. Uh, I would feel okay with it if it guaranteed me a deal with the devil, but obviously it can't promise that. Uh, I also definitely do not want to use the High Priestess card here unless it's absolutely necessary. So, we're fighting Skolex. That's actually awesome. And uh, I should be able... I wish I had piercing shots, but we don't. Uh, but Skolex will hurt himself, potentially, through stuff like that. In the meantime, you know, I could always put down a bomb. But I'm probably just gonna kind of fight Skolex again, the patient way. Uh, you know what? Why don't we put a, down a bomb here? I think this will work out well for us. That just barely missed. I placed a bomb there by accident, but it still worked. And suddenly, after taking that awful damage, I wish we had a remote detonator again. But D6, again, has the potential to be super valuable. Got a weird glitch with these, like, poison explosions happening all the time. Uh, I'm not sure if that would effectively do damage to us or actually do damage to us, but I'm going to stay away just in case. Because Lord knows I don't want my run to be ended by a glitch. If at all possible to avoid. Skolex will be dead. Maybe not this barrage, but uh, certainly very shortly. If I can manage to hit him at least. So let's just back it up again. One more hit I'm expecting. Indeed. Uh, and we actually get an item that is not worth re-rolling. Tears plus HP upgrade means we go down to the next floor. And I think we can't get a deal with the devil anymore. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. So we're going to continue here. The fact that I can fly means I shouldn't be super concerned about these lasers. Especially considering they killed the enemy. Uh, but this means, you know, we're going to be stuck with the D6. Unless Judgment comes through in the clutch here. Finding judgment so early means we're going to be able to d6 the shit out of whatever item he gives us. Assuming he does give us an item. I think all judgments are programmed to give an item at some point. Oh! Kick it away! Okay, that was a clutch move right there. To get that bomb out of the way so it didn't blow up my avenue for items. It's already earned us an extra key, which is important if we intend on going to the chest, which I do. Even if it's kind of unlikely, we'll make it there. And I kind of want to continually reroll this health upgrade to get a better spacebar item. Obviously, steam sale is not really what I'm looking for. So we're just going to uh, take out these guys slowly. And again, you know, there are advantages to being patient here beyond just not taking damage. Uh, the, the other one is that we have the battery, so we'll get more D6 charges probably as a result of us uh, taking our time. So, for now, I'm content to uh, make this take as long as is necessary. And of course, every time I take damage, we'll get pretty close to a D6 charge as well. But in the meantime, this is going to be uh, like a 4 charge room, which is pretty awesome. We'll get a D6 charge after our next room. Uh, I did pick up the health there, and I'll pick up the money as well. What do we have in here? Oh, we found our boss room already. So now, we, ha we enter an interesting uh, like yin and yang type situation, or a give and take. A trade-off, if you will. And that trade-off is, do I want to fight the boss immediately, thus risk taking less damage on a somewhat difficult floor, or do I want to, uh, you know, take all of the available opportunities to re-roll this item right here in the hopes of getting a good spacebar item? It's probably worth doing. Um, you know, tarot cards are something that we can roll with for now. I'm okay with it. I'm not super happy, but, you know, we can get things like the lover card, the lover's card, I should say, Hierophant, the sun. Uh, tarot cards have occasionally, it's easy to forget, easy to forget. Uh, but tarot cards have occasionally made big impacts on our run. So what I should definitely do is pop this quickly. Uh, hold on to the High Priestess card for now. But this is just so we can get as many tarot cards as is possible on this boss fight. Obviously, uh, I'm probably going to use almost all of my entire bomb arsenal on this fight, sadly. So let's pop down some bombs here. We got Poison Mega Bombs, which should not be underestimated here. And also the ability to build rage means this should be not super difficult of a fight. I still don't want to use High Priestess. If I can save that for the Isaac boss fight, I will be a very happy camper. What I should do while Larry Jr. is here is actually just pop Judgment down and pick up all of these items. Because uh, I have an opportunity here. See, I'm being a little bit more strategic than usual. Maybe not fantastically strategic, but, you know, smarter than your average Northern Lion nonetheless. I can't believe I got hit there. 
Um, we're gonna wait for another less difficult enemy to come out, and then I'm gonna uh, probably start taking these pills. I should have put that bomb out there way earlier, but it still got the job done. Uh, what do we have here? Duke of Flies. This is a perfect opportunity to pop that. We get Judgment, who I will definitely use, but in the meantime, High Priestess is coming out. Let's drop another fat bomb in here to clear out some of the crowds. Uh, I should have Laser Bullet Flies coming out now, I'm guessing. Or maybe nothing at all? No, there's the Laser Bullet Flies. Okay, just hang tight. I forgot I could fly, so I don't have to worry about the creep so much. Mom's Heart is gonna die, uh, and we got a lot of good stuff on this room, actually, by way of our actions, believe it or not. Uh, so we're definitely gonna take Judgment. Oh my god, it's Demon Judgment. That's kind of scary, actually. What does this pill do? Range down. Not very good. Um, I don't want to play Demon Judgment, so you know what? We're gonna go up to the next floor and hope for some good tarot cards. Right now, our lives, or, or my life, I guess I should say more accurately, is pretty much 100% in the hands of, of these tarot cards. Uh, so, and I mean, we were running into some unfortunate situations where I'm taking an awful lot of damage. Uh, we got the Hero Font here, which I absolutely want to use, of course. We'll maybe wait until this room is over. Uh, but, again, cards like that could end up making the difference. Let's call it Cards for Humanity right now. Uh, High Priestess card we're definitely going to take. Hero Font, very useful, of course. But we'll take the High Priestess with us. Now, we shouldn't take damage on this room, but, you know, when you get those white bomb flies, anything could happen. I'm just going to pop one of those down so I can take out at least two of those douchebags. I did get hit, yes. I think, actually. Maybe I didn't. I thought I did, but we didn't. We don't seem to have taken damage for it, unless I, I totally miscalculated the amount of health I had left. We got the Hero Font to... Oh, I used High Priestess by accident, and it hit me! I was trying to use the Hero Font! Well, at least we had the Hero Font to back us up there, but... Oh, no need to use a bomb there. Wow, I can't believe I didn't take damage there. That was incredibly lucky. I deserve to take damage there, and probably still continue to deserve to take damage. But we uh, certainly have a potential viability here like we might be able to beat Isaac with this situation just due to the sheer luck that the game refuses to punish me accordingly for my awful awful mistakes one of these sloths has got to be nearly dead soon sloths uh, I guess so tarot cards almost ready to go again and again we're really looking for like a sun card or a world card those are gonna be super valuable lovers hero fonts uh, there's, there's a lot of potential good ones but if the tarot cards end up carrying me through, that would be fantastic. Let's see what we got here. Two of hearts. Yep, uh, we'll, we'll pop that right away. Not maybe the best use for it. I don't want Bob's Rotten Head. I mean, it's an interesting possibility to use Bob's Rotten Head, but uh, I don't think it's all that valuable for us overall. Now, focus on taking out the bomb flies first. That is going to make your life a lot easier in the long run. So we're still alive here. There's one down. I can probably get this Gish. Yeah. And now we'll go for the other bomb fly. I think I just need like a unified strategy for taking those guys out and I'll be A-OK. -okay. Another scent. Not that valuable, but we are getting closer to our next tarot card charge. Blood Bank. Obviously, I'm not super stoked about. But we're going to save all of our bombs. What a slow run. We've been having a lot of pretty slow Isaac runs lately. Uh, which is, you know, it's fine. It's, it's a change of pace at the very least. Let's pop this down. Death card. Pop it right away. Those guys are going to die. Well, one of them is going to be alive, but he's basically dead. Uh, and we're going to move out of this floor. So, you know, again, tarot cards end up saving us a little bit of health in that room, probably, even though it cost me some health to end up using it. Let's check out our top left side here. And all, all things told, this is a fairly easy room. I did use a bomb here, just because I knew it would make things super easy. And let's continue onwards. Sadly, the tarot card charges very slowly uh, unless you get hit, if you have none Sabbath, as we do. Or, uh, you know, you take your time on a room and let the battery do its work. But as is, I'm kind of trying to speed through these rooms so I take less damage. So I think overall we're getting less tarot card charges than we normally would, but we only need one or two good ones to really make a huge difference. I would say that bomb was not that useful. That one, also not super great. I, I need to <laughs> clear some space because I want to use this tarot card. Okay, we get the sun. That's awesome. We're going to try to save that. It would be useful right now, don't get me wrong, as like a, you know, compass basically to help us find the boss easier. But the, the full health is more valuable than the compass at this point. And, you know, we could always just get a, a lover's card or something or more hero font cards by way of it this time. We should use it. Okay, I'm not sure if that worked out. It did work out well for us. Okay. So maybe we'll just take the devil card with us and pop it on a room that is particularly difficult. Uh, this one would not be my number one choice, that is for sure. Strategic use of tarot cards could end up saving me here. 
gonna abandon that guy because who cares? Uh, this is definitely a, a viable rune to use the devil card on. And we will build some rage as we go here. Important to just stay far away from these guys, I think. If one of them dies, uh, things become exponentially easier. If two of them die, room's basically a cakewalk. But first things first, we've got to make sure that we actually do kill one. Oh, that was bad damage. But, it's okay. Kill one. Oh, that was awful. Don't die now. This is very important. Don't die now. Judgment. That's not what we need. Don't get it! Oh, it was so good. I was making good progress. In any case, it was a decent vanilla run. It had a lot of twists and turns and a, an epic storyline in any case. But as always, thank you guys for watching. Continue suggesting your challenge runs. I promise I do read them and will continue to do the ones I deem most absurd, entertaining, or appropriate. As always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.